How are you doing? <laughs> Lesser. I am here as a representative of the Port Hope Police Association. Uh, I did have some Hold notes written down. Hold it closer to your mouth. Oh, closer to my mouth. There you go. How about I just do it without the microphone? How does yeah. it sound? Is that better? Yeah. All right. No, no, no. no. It's not. <laughs> Apparently, it's not. All right, let's do it with the microphone. I'll keep it right here, all right? Oh, Checks News Watch. Big hand for Checks News Watch. Uh, anyway, uh, my name is Ian Slesser. I'm here as a representative for the Port Hope Police Association. Uh, I am a 911 call taker communicator. Uh, essentially, for all intents and purposes, if you want to look at it quite simply, I am the lifeline between you and an emergency and the uniformed officer on the street who is responding to your emergency. Um, I'm the person you talk to, whether it's police, fire, ambulance. It does not matter whether you're in Ward 1 or Ward 2. You call 911, you get me or one of my co workers immediately. We proudly serve the people of Port Hope. And I got to say something. Uh, as a representative of the association, our members are humbled. And, and honored by the amount of support that we see from people, not just in Ward 1. Ward 1 is astonishingly impressive. I mean, the signs are everywhere. Give yourselves a hand for your support. Please do. Please do. Also, I mean, I'm pleased to see them in Ward 2. People in Ward 2 appreciate as well. And thank you very much for that, folks, because we serve all the people of Port Hope. That's what we do. We do indeed serve all the people of Port Hope. And, and we are, uh, we're proud to do that. And, and uh, we do love our jobs, and we love working for the people of Port Hope. And I'm just going to say as a member of the association, and uh, speaking for the people, uh, the members of our association, from the uniforms right down to the civilians, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Port Hope. All of Port Hope, thank you so much for your support. And um, it's now in the hands of mayor and council, and we really do hope for the best for the people of Port Hope. That's all we want. That's what we ask for, and that's what we want for you guys. When we started this, on the very first day, we did our sign flits, and we had a truckload of signs. I actually thought to myself, what if this is just 19 people? And look at how many came out in the rain to show their support for our local police force. Keep to get this thing rolling. If we succeed, what? No, they're on 
if we succeed, if we succeed in doing this, other towns are going to look to us as the town that is the template to have kept their own local policing. And we will be more than happy to help out those towns. It'll be something that will be our duty to do. Avril is about to go up into that chamber right now. I'm going to read Avril's delegation. It is a short 600 words. Good evening, Mayor and Council, citizens of Port Hope. My name is Avril Ewing, and I'm the chair of the Committee to Keep Port Hope's Police. One week from tonight, you, our elected representatives, will be called upon to ratify or reject Option 4, an option that could forever change the way Port Hope is policed. This comes after the sixth study of policing at Port Hope. We urge you all to vote against Option 4 and show you believe maintaining the Port Hope Police Service is the best option for our town. The list of towns, large and small, in Ontario that now regrets switching to the OPP grows longer every day. The Mayor's Coalition for Affordable, Sustainable and Accountable Policing started out with some 27 members. It has now grown to over 70. All with the same goal, to prevail upon the province of Ontario to control the ever-growing costs of OPP policing. Many of the mayors of those municipalities have told us in personal and public messages that switching to the OPP has been a financial mistake they wish they'd never made. They speak of loss of control, inability to negotiate, lengthy response times, and spiraling costs. Some like Cochrane and St. Mary's have actually gone public in news media using the word bankrupt to describe their experiences with the OPP. With the OPP contract set as the highest paid police force in the province as of 2014, and the OPP undergoing policy change with respect to their cost recovery, one has to ask, what's the rush? We don't want the municipality of Port Hope to have to become another member of the Mayor's Coalition for Affordable Policing. Abolishing the Port Hope Police Service and negotiating the real contract costs after the fact is a flawed process. Do you, the Mayor and Council of Port Hope, want to someday find yourselves, or whoever follows you into this chamber, forced to sign an expensive OPP contract because there is no Port Hope Police Service to go back to? Do you want to find the word bankrupt creeping into how you describe Port Hope? The Committee to Keep Port Hope's Police certainly does not want that to happen, nor do the people of Port Hope. The aim of the Committee to Keep Port Hope's Police is self-evident. We want policing here to be carried out by the Port Hope Police Service. Our committee is small, 19 members, but support for our goal has been huge. Whether you choose to listen to a 19-member committee is far less important than whether or not you choose to listen to the people of Port Hope. There was no referendum on policing in Port Hope, but you, our council, have been given one. Our committee has distributed thousands of signs to citizens of both Ward 1 and Ward 2 in the last month, and the people who will put a sign on their lawn are the same people who will go out and vote. Out there on the lawns, in the windows, and the storefronts is the referendum you wouldn't hold. The people of the municipality of Port Hope are telling you as loudly and clearly as they possibly can that they do not want to lose their local police force. For their tax dollars, they want the service delivery that the Port Hope Police provides. Council owes it to the electorate to include benefits with cost to calculate the value of our local police service. This will ensure that the very best decision is being made, not just in the short term, but for the future of the municipality of Port Hope. This is our legacy. On behalf of the Committee to Keep Port Hope's Police and the people of Port Hope, I thank you for your time, and I leave you with one simple request. Put the hope back in Port Hope. Please, say no to option four. Good evening, Mayor Thompson, Municipal Council members, ladies and gentlemen. As President of the Port Hope and District Chamber of Commerce, I'm here to reaffirm and emphasize a previously stated position on policing noted in the July 17th delegation. 
As outlined by our strategic plan, the Port Hilton District Chamber of Commerce commits to engage in effective advocacy to bring issues that matter to our members to the forefront of the public agenda. It is our objective to be the voice of business for Port Hope and to be an articulate and persuasive advocate for business, viewpoints, and fiscal responsibility. Businesses support the tax base for the municipality and they deserve to have their voices heard. The Chamber can take pride in offering this opportunity. In June, we distributed our policing survey to all our members, regardless of the location of their business or home. The Chamber's intent is to represent the opinion of our members, which we have done. As of July 17, 2012, the Chamber received 137 responses from 110 different businesses without duplication. With 402 surveys being distributed, this represents a 34% response rate. At the Committee of the Whole meeting, we provided the details of the four responses most appropriate to our delegation. They were as follows. 92.5% of respondents think that it is better for the safety and security of their business to maintain the Port Hope Police Service. 91% of respondents stated that the Council should extend the consideration of the police services issue until at least the end of 2012. 88% of respondents think that municipal policing offers more accountability. 92.5% of respondents do not think that taxes will go down if the OPP is contracted. The Chamber also received many comments from business owners who indicated other concerns about safety and security lack of control, accountability, and a loss of essential services. This evening, I have Debbie Harvey, owner of Nirvana Hair Studio and Spa, who would like to offer some personal comments about how she thinks losing the Port Hope Police Service will directly affect her business. Thank you, Kathy. Um, I'm Debbie Harvey. I've been a business owner in this town for 20 years now. Um, I'm not from Port Hope. Um, I grew up in Oshawa. I, I don't live in Port Hope. I live in Morris Landing. So I am policed in my home by OPP. Um, in town, I rely on our local police department. I'm smack in the middle of two alcohol um, establishments that are open late at night. So I rely on our police service to help me um, and my husband, eight years ago, we purchased a building, so we are property owners, um, not just business owners. I own a heritage building, and it gives me great comfort to know that at night time I can go home and I'm going to get a call if I need to come into town or not. I live 20 minutes away, not like I live next door. So when my alarm system goes off, which it does on several occasions, um, I get a call from the Port Hope Police Dispatch telling me whether it's imperative that I come into town or it's okay, you know, somebody's just bumped into your window, um, you know, there's nothing wrong there. Or they phone me and say, your window, your front door is broken, you need to get out of bed now. Because it's never at a convenient time. It's always at 2 or 3 in the morning. So to me, not having to come in every time my alarm goes off, them knowing who I am, when they call my house, it's a familiarity. If I call OPP, they don't know who I am. They might call me by name, but they don't know who I am. My Port Hope police officers know who I am. appreciate your participation. Thank you. I'd also like to take a moment to thank Lolly Crimson for all her time she has personally dedicated to researching and working on the policing issue for the Chamber. She is doing a fantastic job as chair of our Policy and Advocacy Committee this year. Lolly and her committee who focused on police services for the Chamber of Commerce provided us with a wonderful service. Thank you, Lolly. The Chamber believes that we have served our members well regarding the policing issue. Our intent is to represent the opinion of our members, and we have continued to do that. Port Hope Police Service has been serving this community since 1834. Having a local police force adds to the image of Port Hope as a desirable place to live and to do business. 
especially with its focus on heritage. Port Hope has all the more reason to treasure institutions like the Port Hope Police Service. We are asking you to retain our police, Port Hope Police Service, which is the desire of our members. We expect they will provide their services based on sound business practice, which will be closely monitored and guided by the Port Hope Police Services Board. Thank you for your consideration. I respectfully submit our delegation. However, as I noted, it is a notice of motion and not debatable this evening. Moved by Councillor Austin, seconded by Deputy Mayor Gilmer. Whereas the current municipality's operating budget for Ward 1 and Ward 2 policing costs total $4.5 million annually. And whereas Council of the Municipality of Port Hope has identified fiscal responsibility as one of their key principles and actions. And whereas Council deemed it fiscally responsible to revisit the policing model for the municipality as previous studies had identified potential savings and prior to committing to a new Port Hope Police Service Police Facility. And whereas Council has directed staff to investigate police service delivery. And whereas on July 26, 2011, Council passed a resolution to develop a working group and to investigate opportunities for saving through the review of police service delivery options. And whereas, based on a study prepared in accordance with the resolution approved July 26, 2011, Council considered a report from KPMG outlining potential policing options and cost savings associated with each option. And whereas, on July 24, 2012, Committee as a whole recommended a resolution be prepared for presentation to Council on September 11, 2012, in support of proceeding with Option 4 of the KPMG report, being the Ontario Provincial Police, to provide policing across the municipality for both Ward 1 and Ward 2, at the service level of 28.5 uniformed officers, with the police station open from 8 a.m. until 10 p.m., Monday to Friday, resulting in an estimated savings of $7.69 million over 10 years. And whereas at the August 15, 2012, Port Hope Police Services Board meeting attended by Council, the Chief of Police identified potential Port Hope Police Service opportunities for savings. And therefore, be it resolved that the decision to contract OPP to provide policing services as recommended by Committee of the Whole on July 24, 2012, be deferred to December 18, 2012. And be it further resolved that the Police Services Board, in consultation with the Port Hope Police Service, submit a Police Services Board approved strategy including estimates, resources, milestones, and scheduling, outlining how the Police Services Board and the Port Hope Police Service will achieve savings in areas such as communications, organizational officers, and civilian staffing, administration, building, and or other savings as deemed appropriate by the Police Services Board totaling approximately five to six million dollars over ten years for the Port Hope Police Service to provide policing to Ward 1 within the Port Hope Police Service OPP hybrid police service delivery approach and to be presented to Council no later than the Committee of the Whole meeting on December 11, 2012. This notice of motion is duly moved and seconded and will be presented to the uh, clerk and uh, will be circulated and we provide costs.